Well, you deserve to play for him and his legacy. Go out and do it today. Go out and play for Kobe. Easier said than done sometimes based on how the emotion may impact you. Again, for those of us who spent time around Kobe Bryant, this is a tough day. Um, but we're still trying to do our jobs, and that includes Stephen A. Smith, who's known Kobe Bryant for quite some time, going back to the days when Stephen was a columnist there in Philadelphia, when Kobe was a star coming out of Lower Marion High School. Stephen A., um, how are you processing this information right now, brother? just devastating obviously I found out uh, a few minutes after uh, the reports came out and um, you know it's a guy I've known for his entire career and um, I've known him pretty well and we've talked a lot and uh, throughout the years and knowing what a winner he was uh, not just on the basketball court but off of it uh, how inspirational he was how motivational he was in terms of really helping to instill in other people uh, you know just the tenacity and the focus on being all that you could be, never taking any shortcuts, uh, a willingness to put in the work, uh, to rip yourself and shred yourself of the excuses of the things that hold you back from achieving the things that you aspire to achieve. Uh, it didn't, it wasn't just about basketball with him. It was about life. And that Mamba mentality wasn't something that was reserved, uh, for just basketball players or for just athletes. It was for any human being out there who had a dream, uh, who had, uh, who felt the need to be inspired about something, who wanted something so badly. It was about going out and getting it. And um, he was just that kind of guy. And uh, he laughed a lot more than people realized. Um, he was, he, he told a lot of jokes more than people realized. He'd sting you whenever he could because that was his way. Um, he was a guy that, uh, he was a great basketball player. Uh, he was a great father. He loved his wife, Vanessa, obviously, tremendously. Um, he was a great friend. Uh, we were just together on New Year's Eve, and um, we were supposed to meet again in a few weeks uh, to discuss some things and to just hear the news that he passed away, uh, particularly in this fashion. Uh, he's been taking a helicopter for decades, uh, living in Newport Beach, and you know, flying, uh, uh, you know, toward downtown to LA to the Staples Center, you know, to and from games all the time for many, many years. Uh, he loved being in that helicopter. He certainly was never really concerned about it. Um, and for him to be gone, uh, particularly through these means, is incredibly tragic and it's sad. And I know that his daughter uh, was on the, on, the, on the helicopter with him. It, 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 it just resonated even that much more profoundly. So um, obviously it's incredibly sad for me, incredibly sad for the NBA community. And um, it's just hard to put it in words, to be quite honest with you. That's the best I can do. You know, Stephen A., Kobe Bryant's been a public figure for, you know, more than two decades, as you mentioned. I mean, he took Brandy to high school prom, right? I mean, who got to do that? But Kobe Bryant did that. Then he comes into the NBA with the bravado of a 10-year veteran, uh, even if he didn't have the skills at that time to match it. But then five NBA championships, an MVP, two gold medals at the Olympics. We've seen Kobe Bryant for quite some time, and from a uh, a fan standpoint, if you will, we feel like we do know who Kobe Bryant is, the relentless competitor, the never-give-up attitude. Uh, you mentioned some of the off-court things, the sense of humor. What is it about Kobe Bryant, Stephen A., that most people, frankly, don't know? Well, I, I would tell you that, again, I use the word motivational because I think that a lot of times when people look at him and they take some of the words and some of the things that he spewed, uh, they, they, they tried to attach it to athletics, but he wasn't about that. He was about life. Uh, you know, when I spoke at the University of Alabama for Nick Saban last year, Kobe had spoken prior to that, I think a year earlier than that. Anywhere he could go to inspire people to be the best that they could be, that was something that he wanted to do. He didn't want to just do it through his words, however. He wanted to continue to do it through his own work to show that basketball was just one element of what he was all about. It certainly didn't limit him in any way. He spoke several languages fluently. Um, obviously Italian, uh, uh, Spanish, and of course English. I mean, this guy was highly, highly intellectual. He was a brilliant mind. Um, and he was not shy about letting you know that he was brilliant because he never believed he was. He was on a mission to constantly elevate himself intellectually. That's just the, the temperament. Uh, that he had, but he also wanted to be inspirational in that regard. I remember years ago uh, when I had the show, quite frankly, on ESPN2, and people used to talk about me, you know, interviewing people, and they used to bring up folks like Oprah and others. He used to say, damn all of that, not Oprah, Harpo. That was his mentality. Don't think about just being in front of the camera. 
Think about owning the product. Think about something bigger than what you're thinking about constantly. It's not just about being a reporter. It's about being an author. It's not just about being a basketball player. It's about being a champion. It's not just about being an artist. It's about being an Academy Award winner. These are all things that he had visions of and it was consistent with who he was from the time that you knew him because coming into the NBA, one of the things that had turned him others off about him initially, he came into the league talking about how he was going to be as great, if not greater, than Michael Jordan one day. And people used to look at him and say, this dude is off of his rock. His chest is sticking out just a little bit too much. He needs perspective. And then sure enough, when you watched him work and you saw the commitment that he put in, you realized he wasn't playing. He was dead serious. He would win championships. He would take a week or two off and then show back up a week or two later and start working in the summertime at 530 in the morning. This is what he did religiously. When other people were taking vacations, he was studying. When other people were taking breaks, he was working out. That was his entire mentality about anything and everything. And if you were going to be around him and you talked about aspiring to do something, one of the biggest things he would question you about was the work that you were putting in. He would probe. He would interrogate because he wanted to make sure that you were doing what you said that you wanted to do, that you were, if you were truly aspiring to go after what you were aspiring to go after, he wanted to judge what you were doing for yourself to see how seriously he could take that you really meant what you said about really, really going for it. That was his mentality all of the time. And he was that way with teammates. He was that way with executives. He was that way with league officials. He was that way with contemporaries. He certainly was that way with me, um, along with a bevy of other people that he called friends or called one of his boys or whatever the case may be. That was his mentality. And all of that shaped Black Mamba, the Mamba mentality. You either had to adjust to the program or you didn't want to be around him because he wasn't going to change because he knew you he was right and you were probably wrong if you were against him. Yeah, that work ethic was notorious for Kobe Brown. I mean, he would show up to games uh, or before practice, sometimes before shoot-around, after going through a full workout and have to go change into dry clothes just so he could get ready for the practice or the shoot-around before the game that night. That's how committed Kobe Bryant was. Steve, stand by, because we're getting more and more reaction from around the league on the death of Kobe Bryant and helicopter crash outside of Los Angeles around 10 a.m. this morning there in L.A. Alvin Gentry and the Pelicans have a game coming up later this evening. He was asked to give his thoughts on Kobe passing away at the age of 41. I mean, I, I, 